There are a lot of harmless things Americans use every day that are highly illegal in Japan. So, what are these things and why are they considered to be so dangerous here? One of the most common American things that can get you in jail in Japan is medication. Of course, there's a wide variety of medicines in America that are totally illegal, but there are some that are not. This brand of nasal decongestant can get you arrested. The reason? The active ingredient is levmetafetamine. It's the thing that clears your nose so you can breathe easier. But it's also an amphetamine. In Japan, all forms of amphetamines are highly illegal. But in the States, some types are allowed to be used to make medicine. You guys have something called drug scheduling. It's a classification of different drugs and how addictive and dangerous they are. The more addictive, the more illegal. But this system also lets you have some flexibility in using a tiny amount of drug in medicine if it has some kind of benefit. But here, we don't have this kind of system, which means all drugs are considered to be extremely harmful and illegal. That's why an American girl named Carrie Russell was arrested in Japan because of her ADHD medicine. Carrie moved to Japan in 2015 to start her new job as an English teacher. While having dinner with some friends in Tokyo, five plainclothes officers came in and arrested her. She was incarcerated in a women's detention center under suspicion of smuggling amphetamines mines into Japan. It was prescribed to her in the US to treat her ADHD, but she had no idea that's completely illegal in Japan. Unfortunately, in her case, Japan's legal system tends to lean towards guilty until proven innocent, unlike innocent until proven guilty in America. One of the most important things that you need to do before you come to Japan is check the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare website on what medicines you are allowed to bring and how much of it. Because if you are not careful, you bring the wrong type of medicine or too much of it, you could end up in a lot of trouble. But medicines aren't the only thing that will get you jail in Japan. One of the most interesting things I noticed in America was that a lot of guys carried something like this with them. They are so common in America, you call them EDC, everyday carry item. And it makes sense that you would carry one with you every day because you can use it useful things like opening the package or cut some rope or kill your enemies. Yes, it's a real knife. My weakness, it's small knife. So it might shock you that this useful tool can land you in jail in Japan. Yes, a small pocket knife like this is enough to get you arrested and charged thanks to Japan's swords and firearms positions control law. Article 22 states that anyone who's carrying knives with a blade longer than 6 cm for no other reason besides work or justifiable reasons can be punished with jail time in Japan. This law was implemented in Japan after World War II in 1958. This was mainly used as a way to prevent gang fights that involve guns and swords. These days, it's pretty rare for people to carry even a small pocket knife with them. If you were hiking and you have a small knife with you, it might be okay, but it's still probably better to make sure the length of the blade is shorter than 6 cm or don't carry anything at all. In general, I think carrying a pocket knife in Japan is a very bad idea. If the police decide to search your belongings for any reason and find one, you could end up in a lot of trouble. Actually, this was the case for a 74-year-old American man who came to Japan in 2009 and who ended up in detention for 9 days. Before I share the story with you, it's hard to verify if it was a real case. The only source I could find on it was an article from Japan Times. A 74-year-old Californian man came to visit his son who was living in Japan. He asked a couple police officers for directions, but they asked him, are you carrying a knife? The old man said yes, then showed them the pocket knife he brought with him from the US. After measuring it, they found that the blade was 8.6 cm long, which means it is considered illegal in Japan. He was then arrested and held for 9 days in a cell. Knife laws are pretty serious in Japan, and it's not uncommon for a suspect to be treated as guilty in Japan. So when you come to Japan, keep your knives, pocket knives, and mouth tools at home. You definitely don't want to be caught carrying one by the police. This kind of punishment might seem ridiculous, but what if 
I told you that you could go to jail for something even more ridiculous than this? Because you can actually face prison time for selling illegal Pokemon! Before you ask, yes, Pokemon are real. They just don't look as cute as ones in the video game. But what does it mean to sell illegal Pokemon? Some people are able to modify the data of a Pokemon game save file. They can give the Pokemon powers and abilities that they normally wouldn't have. If you do this as a service for someone, it can actually get you arrested. But it doesn't just apply to Pokemon. Any kind of illegal game modification that you make money from is illegal. Thanks to Japan's unfair competition prevention law, it was made so that businesses and individuals can compete against each other fairly. By breaking this law, you could face five years of jail, a 5 million yen fine, or both. This law doesn't just cover game data modification, it also covers physical modifications you make to game system too. For example, some game machines can be modified with special hardware so that you can play illegal copies of a game easily. Of course, it takes a lot of skill to open up a video game machine and add these parts. If you decide to do that service for someone, you are breaking the law. And there have been people who were arrested for breaking this law. A 23-year-old man in Aichi Prefecture was modifying customers' save game data for the game Pokemon Sword and Shield. For 500 yen, he made a customer's Pokemon more powerful and gave the special move that they can't get. He made a cool 1,150,000 yen doing this. But now he's paying the price in prison. Of course, this kind of activity isn't criminally punished in America. As far as I know, there's a famous case in the 1990s where Nintendo tried to sue a company called Galoob over special equipment called Game Genie. It lets you change the code of any video game on your Nintendo. So you could give yourself unlimited lives, special powers, etc. that the game developers never intended. Nintendo tried to argue that it infringed on copyright laws, but the judge didn't agree and Nintendo lost the case. But in Japan, Nintendo finally gets the last laugh. And anyone making money by doing any game console or save file modification will get you in trouble. Before you even think of trying to get rich selling bootleg Pokemon, think again. And speaking of bootlegs, this bootleg will definitely get you in trouble. Japanese people and alcohol go together like this guy and cake. Hey! I've talked a lot before about Japan's alcohol vending machines, the bars with all you can drink specials, etc. So it might be hard for you to imagine that Japan would have any strict laws when it comes to alcohol. But there definitely is one that you have to watch out for. In America, you guys really have a strong beer culture. There are so many beers, not only from big companies, but smaller independent breweries as well. You guys even love beer so much that people make their own at home. It's called home brewing, and it seems quite popular. Of course, it's completely legal to make and enjoy your own home brew in the US. But if you do it in Japan, you could end up in jail for up to 10 years or be fined 1 million yen. This is because of the Japanese liquor tax law. According to the law, it's forbidden to make liquor without manufacturing license. So basically, if you make your own alcohol, the government's not getting its tax money. And of course, all governments around the world hate it when they don't get the tax money. Of course, this law only applies to alcoholic beverages over 1%. So if you make a very weak beer or wine, you're okay. But if you are caught making anything over that, you can get in big trouble. But there is one exception, umeshu. This is a wine made from Japanese plums. When you come to Japan in the summer, you see so many grocery stores selling Japanese plums and these special glass jars for plum wine. Of course, the question is, if it's illegal to make your own alcohol, why is it legal and so common to make umeshu? Well, one of the most important ingredients is a Japanese liquor. 
like shochu. Without it, you just can't make umeshu. Since you have to spend money to buy shochu anyway, it's seen as completely legal to make this strong drink. So, if you just love to make your own alcohol completely from scratch, it might not be the best idea to do it in Japan. It's probably better just to pick up a beer from a vending machine instead. For Japanese people, this is pretty shocking, but there are way more American things that shock Japanese people. I talk all about it in this video here, so check it out. Thanks for watching, Okini!